Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a steering wheel in BeamNG Drive. First order of business, before you go launching BeamNG Drive, you're going to want to check for your steering wheel software on your computer. I have a Logitech G920, it's the same as the G29, but this advice goes for any wheel. You want to check for your wheel's software before you launch the game. For a Logitech wheel, you're going to need the Logitech G-Hub software to run your wheel. After you've downloaded the Logitech G-Hub software, you're going to want to open that up before you launch the game. I'm currently installing Logitech G-Hub in order to get the wheel to work. If your Logitech G-Hub gets stuck on this loading screen and it won't load for more than a couple minutes, you might have to reinstall the software. Also, you're going to want to make sure that your Logitech wheel spins to either end of its uh, limits when you plug it in. That's just it checking uh, its bounds. And that's how you're going to know that your steering wheel is calibrated, basically. So, now that you have the Logitech G-Hub installed, you can see your wheel should show up here. If it doesn't, just try unplugging the wheel and plugging it back in. That might reset it. Um, but go into the wheel and click on steering wheel. The one thing that I recommend you change is the operating angle. A high operating angle at max means you're going to have to be really turning the wheel a whole lot more, uh, especially if you're doing racing. You want to lower that steering angle so that you only have to turn it uh, a little bit for your wheels to, to turn faster. So that makes the experience a lot better. You can fine tune that later once you're in BeamNG Drive. So once you've launched BeamNG Drive, I recommend you go into a free room and uh, any map is fine. Uh, you just want to make sure that we can test what we are changing right away. So, once you're in the game, you want to go into the settings up here, the options, and go down to controls. In bindings, you should be able to go down and change each individual binding that you want. Just wanted to switch my car. See if your view is weird. I have a button to reset the view right on the controller. <laughs> if you get into a crash and you want to reset your car, I also have a button for that right on my controller, or right on my wheel. To set that button up, uh, what you're going to want to do is in your controls and in your bindings, uh, it should be in gameplay. And it will be recover slash rewind. And you're just going to want to click the plus if you don't already have it assigned to the button on your wheel. You're going to click the plus and then you're going to click the button you want it to be on your wheel and then hit apply. And now you have that set up so that you can reset your car if you crash. Also in controls, the reset uh, camera button um, is, let's see, center camera. Center camera is very useful uh, just to have a button to reset your camera when you're driving. It's very nice. Also, having a next camera button is also pretty important. Um, you don't have to go around and press C on your keyboard every time you want to change your view. Also in vehicle specific, uh, you may need to change your throttle um, because if your throttle is always on when you start driving, you may need to change this to inverted axis. All right, let's see, because if you look here, all of these sliders are at maximum when you're actually off the pedals. So you need to make sure that these have changed to inverted axes um, in your bindings. And to do that, you just want to come into the bindings in the vehicle. And then for throttle, you can see I have inverted axis set up. You could also change the dead zone and the dead zone, uh, the dead zone at rest and dead zone at the end. If you're using a Logitech wheel, a lot of times uh, it's very annoying when you have to brake hard because there's a rubber stopper in your pedal for some reason. So as you can see, 
I'm pushing the brake down and I'm only getting to about 75% before I'm hitting that rubber stopper. So what I'm going to want to do is, uh, actually it's the dead zone end, I'm going to move that down to about where 75% is. So when I push that brake down and I'm pushing, let's see, I, I guess I could lower that a little bit. Yeah, point 0.2. This is about as far as I could press the pedal down with without like grabbing on the wheel and like pushing it like that, uh, which is really no good. So I recommend you change the dead zone of your brake so that you could actually get full use of your brakes um, on your car. Hit apply and we're good. We've sunk our ship. And I'm just going to hold that rewind button to get us out of here. Now, something that you might want to change if you have a shifter is the default gearbox behavior. Um, you might want to select that, uh, set that to realistic and turn off the gearbox safety assistant, clutch assistant, and throttle assistant so that you get a more realistic feel when you are driving because if you have a clutch um, <laughs> you don't want the game automatically pressing the clutch for you you know uh, or, or you might actually <laughs> but I recommend you turn all these off so that you could actually get the full feel of, of driving in BMNG with a wheel oh I really hope I helped you guys set up your wheels. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in the comments. And uh, have a great night or day. Have a great day, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, peace. Oh!